A pair of pointy shoes, a wrinkled white sheet, a pile of pillows, rosy red cheeks, and why is she looking at me like that? She's staring directly at me. Oh no, this is making me nervous. Okay, don't freak out. Treat it like public speaking. Just imagine everyone naked and the nerves will fade away. Whoa. This piece is called The Nude Maha by Francisco Goya. It was a private commission that was never supposed to see the light of day. A painting that was hidden behind closed doors for over a decade. A painting that was so raunchy, it was confiscated by authorities and almost led to Goya's arrest. Lying atop a green velvet sofa is a nude young woman. Her pale, petite frame emerges from her dim surroundings. She's referred to as a maja, a term to describe a lower-class Spanish belle who embraces her immodesty. Her knees bend slightly, her arms reach behind her head. Her torso is propped up by the stark white pillows adorned with lace below her. A sly smile peeks through her pursed lips. The rest of her flushed face is framed by dark curls that accentuate her wide brown eyes. Okay, I have questions. Like, why was this painting so suggestive while this one and this one were perfectly fine? Well, admittedly, the full frontal pose was a bold choice on Goya's part, but people also took issue with her hairy because this was the first time hair like this was depicted in a painting in a way that wasn't negative. All of this combined with her direct, unabashed stare and the fact that she was a real person and not religious or mythological made this painting too hot to handle. Yeah. And although we aren't sure of the identity of the person who commissioned this piece, all signs point to Manuel de Godoy, the first Secretary of State of Spain. A few years later, Goya created the clothed Maha. Her pose and expression is almost identical to her nude counterpart. She wears a white chemise gathered at the waist with a light pink sash. A small yellow jacket with black detailing covers her arms. A pair of tiny golden shoes fit snugly on her feet. At first glance, this appears to be a more innocent version of the first painting, except the look on her face is almost more provocative. Furthermore, Goya made the clothed Maha take up more of the frame compared to her nude counterpart, making her seem that much more brazen. And since she's in contemporary dress, it solidified the fact that this person was a real woman from modern times, which was apparently really bad. While the model's identity remains a mystery, she's believed to be either the Duchess of Alba, Goya's rumored mistress, or Pepita Tudo, Manuel de Godoy's mistress. Okay, so Godoy was so offended by the nude portrait that he had Goya make him a more PG version. It's a little extra, but not that weird, right? Wrong. Here's the kicker. Godoy actually had an entire collection of naked paintings, and this piece was only one of many nudes that resided in his private cabinet. But this painting stood out from the rest because it doubled as a form of entertainment. Oh no no, not that kind of entertainment. Although, let's be honest. It's believed that Godoy hung these paintings in a way that the nude Maha was positioned behind the clothed Maha. In addition, he installed a special pulley system that he could yank and magically unclothe her at any time. Manuel de Godoy had the reputation of being a womanizer, but it wasn't just his exes that took issue with him. Lord Byron wrote that it was to him that the Spaniards universally impute the ruin of their country. Manuel de Godoy was appointed by the King of Spain, Charles IV, which was quite possibly the worst decision the king ever made. And that's saying a lot because it seems like King Charles was practically incapable of making good decisions, if he was even the one making the decisions at all. Goya, who was the court painter at the time, made this portrait of Charles IV and his family. You might see this portrait as an artistic take on Velazquez's Las Meninas. You might also see it as a bit of a dig on Goya's part. Positioning Queen Maria Luisa in the center, insinuating she's really the one in charge, while King Charles stands passively off to the side. Francisco Goya had a gift of cutting through the bullshark and seeing things as they truly were. 
You could call it cynicism, you could call it a twisted sense of humor, but either way, it's entirely possible that when Goya painted this piece, he knew he was looking at a house of cards. Charles IV's days on the throne were numbered. In 1807, French political leader Napoleon Bonaparte made an alliance with Charles IV under the guise that they would conquer Portugal together. But Napoleon lied. Oh my. In 1808, French troops marched into Spain, supposedly just passing through, but they had no intention of leaving. Napoleon's armies were taking over Spain. Both Godoy and King Charles were captured by Napoleon as prisoners, and Napoleon installed his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, on the Spanish throne. Despite their atrocities, Goya pledged his allegiance to Bonaparte and painted portraits for the French regime. In the same year, the nude Maha and the clothed Maha were seized, along with other questionable pictures that Manuel de Godoy had in his private collection. The events of May 1808 became part of the Peninsular War, a six-year fight against French forces occupying the Iberian Peninsula. It eventually came to an end with Napoleon's downfall in 1814, and Ferdinand VII, Charles IV's son, returned as the King of Spain. King Ferdinand wasn't as enlightened as the Spanish kings that came before him, and as a result, he restored the Spanish Inquisition, an entity whose job was to suppress what the monarchy deemed to be heresy. The Inquisition promptly confiscated the nude Maha and the clothed Maha, and said they were so indecent and prejudicial to the public good that Godoy and his art curator were brought in for questioning. Goya was then summoned and asked to tell authorities why he painted the pieces, who commissioned them, and if they were meant to emulate other works of art. Although Goya's answers do not survive, the Inquisition eventually accepted that the Mahas were based off Titian's Danai and Velazquez's Rock Be Venus. And because these paintings were previously deemed acceptable by the Inquisition, Goya was free to go. Having pledged his allegiance to the French only years earlier, King Ferdinand questioned Goya's loyalty. The artist attempted to prove his devotion by creating two paintings depicting the Spanish uprising against French forces. The 2nd of May, 1808, that depicted the day Spaniards rebelled against French forces, and the 3rd of May, 1808, when they paid the price for doing so. These paintings were supposed to display Spanish heroism, but the latter in particular is anything but heroic. A robotic row of French soldiers lean forward in unison to take the life of an innocent Spaniard. There's no logic in this, only senseless suffering. This event didn't have to happen, but it did. And Goya made sure we couldn't forget it. It seems Goya was a master at getting his patrons to agree to one idea and delivering something that was just a little off. Like if someone asks for an orange and you hand them a tomato. Goya developed a mysterious illness in 1792 that caused him to become deaf. He suffered a relapse in 1819 and almost died. Some believe this is what compelled him to make his ominous black paintings. They were a set of 14 works of art that were positively haunting. A Greek god gapes in horror as he devours his own son. A submerged dog gazes helplessly at the rising tide above. A goat preaches to a congregation of witches. Goya painted these pieces directly onto the walls in his home in Madrid, commonly known as the house of a deaf man. Francisco Goya was uniquely able to divulge the uncomfortable aspects of the human condition through his art. And while the nude Maha was created far before Goya's black paintings, I think she too reveals an interesting aspect of human nature, one that's only a tug away. Goya never shied away from the truth, and sometimes the truth is super hairy. If you'd like to color your own masterpiece, you can click the link in the description to purchase my coloring book. Thank you channel members for helping make this video possible.